Hi, I'm Professor Scott Fries. This is the um, introduction video for the CMPS 147, an Introduction to Computer Science 1 course uh, for the winter 2017 session. Um, so in, the, in this video, I'm just going to kind of go over um, the policies and how to get all the information that you're going to need for the rest of the semester. And then the, the, the rest of the modules throughout the course that are linked to from the syllabus is all about sort of um, learning how to do C++. Um, so the first thing I, I, I want to go in, in turn, before going right into policy is just to make sure that, that you know right off the bat what we're going to be studying in this course. Um, so the computer science field, people get into it for a lot of reasons. Um, and computer science, when you hear it, means a lot of things, to different, a lot of different things to different people. Um, so computer science as a, as a pure discipline is, is, tends to be very theoretical. It's a, it's a math like discipline. So if you've heard that computer science, to, to be good at it, you need to, to know a lot of math. Um, that's somewhat true, um, but it's not really what this course is about. Um, and so computer science is a major. If you continue in computer science, you will be exposed to math. Um, but our major at Ramapo is actually a lot more akin to what, what we call software engineering. Software engineering is about writing um, applications, writing software applications, um, writing a lot of code. And we spend probably the majority of our time in this course really just learning code. You're going to be writing programs that do math, um, but I'm going to tell you how to, how to make the equations work and how to, how to work with the math. You don't have to be a math major to, to be good at computer science or at least software engineering. Um, so we're, we're going to be sticking in the software engineering realm, even though the course is sort of called computer science. Um, and then there's other, there's other fields of computers. Uh, computer engineering is a study of the actual digital electronics, the hardware involved, and information technology. And there is a, an IT major in the business school here at Ramapo. Information technology is more about administering systems. Um, you will do a little bit of software engineering in that as well. Um, but it's a little bit more focused on making existing applications and computer networks work well. So again, this course is sort of the first course you would start with in terms of becoming a software engineer. Um, we are going to be learning C++, um, which is part of a family of a, of a group of very similar languages that still dominate the computer science field. They've been around, some of them have been around for a very long time, some of them are fairly new. Um, so C, C++, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, um, if you've heard of any of those languages, the, the syntax is very similar. They look kind of the same. They work sort of the same way. Um, there's, there's details that start to separate very, very um, in, a, in, a, in a big way. Um, but on a surface level, these languages look sort of the same. And the good part about that is that as once you master one, uh, learning other programming languages becomes much more easily, easy. Um, it's not like natural language where, you know, if you spend most of your life um, speaking English, to go then learn Spanish is difficult. Um, natural languages are much more difficult to learn than programming languages. Once you get used to thinking like a programmer, um, working in another language doesn't tend to be as, as difficult as you might initially think it might be. <clears throat> so our goals for this course is to make sure that first of all, you, you leave with a basic understanding of how computers work. And I'm actually gonna focus on that a lot in the first module of the semester. Um, you're also going to master the procedural portions of C++. And that includes variables, control flow, functions and arrays. If any of you have taken um, programming courses before, um, especially if you learned a language like Java, um, you might see that something that is conspicuously absent from that list is classes um, and object-oriented programming. C++ is an object-oriented programming language, um, but that's actually the focus of CS2 at Ramapo, so that's CMPS 148. So we're going to be, you're going to study, if you continue through those courses, you're going to study object-oriented programming in the second part of the sequence. Um, so as you leave this course, you will be prepared for CMPS 148. Okay, so um, with that said, um, let's get into the policies, the procedures of the winter course specifically. Um, we are on a very, very tight schedule this semester. Um, really, we only have a uh, a full three weeks. Um, one of those weeks is the 
um, the week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, so, you know, if you're taking this course and you haven't really thought about the schedule just yet, recognize that you actually are going to have to learn an entire semester's worth of material um, in just three weeks. And so, you know, not to not to discourage anyone, but this it's a it's a it's a tough hill to climb, and you need to be dedicated during these three weeks to really spending a lot of time on this course each and every day, um, because it is a it's a course that builds on every lesson before it. Um, so once you start to fall behind, things get very very difficult. So most of the time that I'm talking about, uh, you know, the policies here on this in this video, I'm going to keep reminding you how how important it is to keep up the pace here um, because there isn't a lot of time to make up ground. And the first way that you can ensure that you're, you're on a good pace is to read this course syllabus really carefully. You obviously haven't, you've seen this page because you've clicked on the link to, to hear this video. Um, but there's a lot of words here. There's a lot of, a lot of things being discussed. Um, it, I, I urge you to read every word of this syllabus. Um, I've gone through a lot of time in designing the course so it can be possible to make it through this with, in three weeks. All of the information that you need to know about how to get your computer set up and all the, all, all the rest of the things that I'll talk about a little bit in this video, um, they are all here on this page. So as I briefly go through this stuff on the slides, um, you should be taking some time to, to kind of digest all this material as well. Um, in particular, I'll just point out that the course materials se section has information on um, installing the programs that you're going to need from this class. Um, there's information about the textbook, the objectives. We have modules consisting of all the videos that you'll be watching. Um, you can see the schedule laid out pretty plainly. Um, all of the programming examples that you see during all of the videos throughout the semester can all be downloaded um, right here in the programming examples that zip. So you can always have this, the full solutions. Um, I talk a little bit about the recommended pace, the assignments, how to approach the assignments, how to think about them. Um, all of this information is on the syllabus and I, I strongly suggest that you go through this very carefully um, so you understand completely where we're, where we're headed. I'm just going to go through some of the major detail, major points um, in these slides right now. Um, so first off, this is a 100% online course. Um, I will be available over email if we if we need some a little bit more um, interaction to help you solve a problem. We can use Skype or something for a video conference. Um, but it's a it's a 100% online course, and that includes the exams. Um, there will be a midterm exam and a final exam in this course on January 6th and the 13th. And you do have to take the exam during a given time slot, but you will be taking the exam at home. Um, and so as we lead up to the exams, and I, I will talk about this in emails throughout the, the next couple of weeks, uh, as we lead up, you're going to have to select either a 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. time slot or a 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. time slot on these days. Um, and I will be emailing those exams directly to you. Um, and you'll be submitting them through Moodle. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, by that deadline, um, by by that time. So you're gonna you're gonna be required to take the exams on those times and on those dates. Um, but you can take them at home. Textbook. Um, the textbook is very important for this course. Um, I think this screenshot's a little old. I think the price has dropped a little bit. Um, but the the CS1, and if you take CS2 with me later, I use the same book. Um, the textbook gives you an important set of background material about how to make, how to, how to actually write your programs. Um, so the course has been designed to include lecture slides. It's got lecture videos, but attached to every single one of those sets is textbook readings and textbook material. And it, it is extremely important to be reading that as well. Um, lots of times students will ask questions and, and their, their questions, they'll, they'll wait for office hours or they'll wait to get in touch with me, they'll send me an email. Um, and I'll, I'll answer back that, you know, I'll, I'll give you the answer, but, but also that this was in the textbook. Um, a lot of the material that we cover, um, or a lot of the material in the textbook will be stuff that um, will really directly relate to the assignments that you work on. So please get this textbook, um, especially if you're going to take CS2, it's likely that you'll use the same one. Um, 
As I mentioned, it's an online course. Um, please make sure you check the syllabus regularly. I don't really anticipate much changes in terms of what the assignments would be or anything like that, but you should be um, both checking the syllabus uh, and probably more importantly, and I, sh I should have written this on the slide, you absolutely have to be checking your email frequently. Um, I'm going to be emailing a lot of information out to you during the course of the semester, reminders on what to do. Um, you can't tune out um, unfortunately, you really can't tune out over the holiday um, season. I doubt I'm going to be sending you, um, you know, reminders and updates on New Year's Eve. Um, but, you know, you, unfortunately, the schedule is extremely tight. So make sure that you are checking in um, each and every day. Uh, if you haven't used Moodle before, um, the, the link is www.moodle.rampo.edu. Um, you use your regular Ramapo username and password to log in. And on that site, you'll have links where you can upload your assignments. And I'll, I'll have a little bit more to say about that in the next few videos. Um, that's really all we'll use Moodle for. All of the, the content itself um, is on that course syllabus page that we were just talking about before. So this is the, the sort of the, the place of record for what your assignments are, what their due dates are, and everything else. And Moodle is just where we'll submit our programs. So the course has been organized into 29 modules. Um, each of them is posted um, on our website, actually not Moodle. Um, each model consists of se module consists of several resources. So it's the lecture sides, it's the lecture recordings, it's the textbook readings. Um, and these are listed specifically within most of the module slides and the programming examples in the slides. Um, this, so, so all four of those aspects um, of sort of material should be looked at as a unit um, within each model. It is not going to be good enough to just listen to me talk. Um, you're going to have to go through the textbook and you're going to have to write a lot of code. Um, the way people do well in this course is by following that, that, that simple sort of rule. When we go over programming examples in the modules that you'll see, you want to stop and you want to try to do them yourself. Um, and then you want to study the solutions that I provide. You want to study the way I solve them in the videos. But you actually need to go and do the work. You need to work through the programming examples yourself um, in order to actually learn how to do this stuff on your own. Um, so all of it, the textbook readings, the lectures, the recordings, they're all an integrated unit for each one of these 29 modules. Some of the modules are long. They're 45 minutes um, lecture or videos. Some of them are rather short. Um, so you can plan ahead in terms of how, many, how much time you need to allocate to them. Um, you should work extremely hard to stay on schedule, um, especially in the beginning. Um, the, it, it's unfortunate, again, that the first week is between, is really during the height of the holiday season, but you can't afford to, to skip a week. You can't afford to fall behind in that first week. Um, the entire course is outlined on the, the schedule is outlined on the website. Um, Please keep up with it. If you feel that you're falling behind, um, you know, reach out, talk to me. Uh, if there's something that you're struggling with, um, we can hopefully get you past that. Um, but you need to take the feeling of, of falling behind pretty seriously in a, in a three-week course. Um, you're going to be doing a lot of programming throughout the semester. <clears throat> there are 11 labs, um, which are programs that you're going to be doing on your own. Um, you, the, the, you'll be doing it at home, you'll be submitting through Moodle at the end of each of the three weeks, you'll be submitting a set of labs. Um, of course, you're, it, it, it's up to you as to when you complete those labs, but I don't recommend you waiting and trying to do all three at like a session, uh, just one session at the end of the week. Um, these are the types of things that you should be doing at the end of every module that assigns these labs. Um, they're best um, practiced and they're best done right after you've looked at the material for the first time. Um, it, it, they're designed specifically to reinforce and to make sure that you understand how to program with the new syntax that we might cover or the new concepts we might cover in the modules. Um, the labs are designed to take you under an hour or so. Um, as we move forward, you know, in the second and the third week, they might take a little bit longer than that. The more programming practice you get, the better the more smoothly these labs are going to go, the more time you put into programming the, pro the examples in the lectures yourself, um, the easier the labs will be, and easier the homework assignments will be, and easier the, the exams will be. 
there's just absolutely no substitute from, for actually coding yourself. Um, computer science or software engineering, it's a lot like a sport. It's a lot like playing a musical instrument. You don't really learn how to do this stuff by watching somebody else do it. You don't really learn how to do this stuff by reading about how to do it. You have to do it yourself. Um, so that's why there's 11 labs, and that's why there's a lot of programming examples, and that's why there's homework assignments, because it's the only way that you will learn how to do this stuff on your own. So all the deadlines, all the, the details on when to submit things are, are on the course syllabus. Um, basically, the, the, the short, short story is that at the end of every week, you're going to have several labs that are going to be submitted, and you're also going to have a homework assignment. So the homework assignments are designed to be a little longer. Um, they're more in depth. They are. They're going to require you to use a lot of the concept, uh, concepts from a lot of the different modules that you covered that week. Um, so you should plan, you know, three, four, maybe in five hours for those. When you get stuck, email me. Um, don't sit forever and looking at the same program. Um, if you get, if you have a problem with the lab, if you have a problem with the homework assignment and you can't solve it, email me the the code. Um, I need to see the code. I don't email me saying that my program doesn't work or here's an error that I got. I, I won't be able to explain and, and figure out what's wrong with your code unless I see the full program. So always send that as an attachment, the full CPP file, C++ file. And again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit what that is in the future modules. Um, all the due dates, the, the, they are 11.59 p.m. And you know, uh, on the due date, um, I'll be honest, if you're 10 minutes late, if you're a half hour late, that's not going to be a, a big deal. Um, as long as you complete them that night that they're assigned, um, I'm happy. I'll be grading them the next morning, likely. Um, as long as you're in there, when I look, um, you'll be fine. But the technical deadline is 11.59 p.m. on the due date. Again, the labs and homeworks are already posted. You can work ahead. Um, I don't advise you to try to work ahead without actually taking the time to to review the material ahead of time though um, you are not going to be this is not the type of course that you could skip ahead with um, you have to actually work consistently through each module if you're going if you're moving along pretty quickly um, that that's great and, and that's a that's a good idea due to the condensed schedule there are absolutely no late assignments accepted um, again it's a three-week semester um, being a few days late with a lab doesn't seem like a big deal, but you're actually falling dramatically behind during the sem through the, the semester. So there's no late labs, there's no late homework assignments. Um, everything that you submit has to be submitted by that night that they're 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 ready for. Uh, they're they're due. Um, I in module two specifically in part two of the video, um, I will go over a little bit more detail on to, as to what to submit when you're submitting source code. But the bottom line is that it has to be a file with a .cpp extension. It is always, you are always going to submit only C++ source code. So anything that you upload to Moodle, you should probably give a little, give a click on and just ensure that you uploaded the right file. Uh, Moodle's gonna look something like this. Um, kind of changes a little bit as, as time goes by, but up on the you can see that there probably there'll be a, a link for a lab assignment or a homework assignment or whatever that might be. This screenshot's a little old. Um, when you click on that that link, you're going to add a submission. All right, you're going to browse for your source code, and that's the important part. When you browse for your source code, your program file. There's a lot of files on your hard drive. There are a lot of files that are going to be named similarly. Um, you have to be very careful that you submit the right one because there's only one file that I need and all the other ones are useless for me. So please make sure, again, in module two, we'll go over that in a little bit more detail. Please make sure that you always upload a .cpp file. Anything else, a .exe file, a .sln file, a .project file, You'll start to see these as you start to write your code for the first time. All of those files, if you submit those, will result in a zero for the lab because they're not code. I can't do anything with them. Required software. Um, all you, you don't have to buy anything for this course. Um, anything that you're going to work with your programs for is free. 
Um, some of the software that we talk about requires you to register. Just provide them your email address. Um, that's that. Hopefully you're okay with that. Um, that's it. But it's a it's free software. Um, C++ can be developed on Windows. Um, it can be developed on a Mac, and it can be developed on Linux. So there's no difference between C++ on any other program. However, Visual Studio is not available on a Mac or on Linux. Um, I actually didn't up these, update these slides. I, I use a portion of these slides for um, in-class um, courses rather than just online. Typically, I, I, I have students use Visual Studio while they're in the labs taking the exams. Since this is a 100% online course, that's really not relevant. You, you can, if you have a Mac and you want to use Xcode, that is perfectly fine. You can use that and you can use that on your exams. Um, uh, all the computing labs at Rampo, if you do want to come to campus to complete um, any homework or any, any labs, all the computing labs on campus um, have Visual Studio installed on them. All right. And in the course syllabus under course materials, there's a link with extremely detailed information about getting um, getting working with Visual Studio. So if you have Windows on your laptop or at home, Visual Studio is what you're going to use. If you're using a Mac or if you're using Linux, you cannot use Visual Studio. Um, you're going to need to use something else. Um, so if you have a Mac or a Linux machine, um, I can provide you tutorials and instructions. Um, just ask. E send me an email and I'll give you some instructions on how to get working on those operating systems. But if you have Windows, you can use Visual Studio. All right. And again, I have the link for Visual Studio here. The biggest part, and this, this goes for Visual Studio or any other operating system that you're using, do not wait with this. The first program that you write is simply going to print out your name. It's an easy program. Do it immediately, because I can tell you that for about a quarter of the students that try this, things don't go smoothly. When you try to install programs on your machine, something goes wrong. It has nothing to do with programming. You're not doing anything wrong. Your computer just wasn't up to date, or there's a, there's a million and one reasons why software doesn't install sometimes. These are prereqs. So if you end up in a situation where you're halfway through the first week and you can't run programs, you are going to fall behind to a point where you may not be able to catch up, even if you are an excellent programmer. Um, so don't wait. Get this. Get lab the first lab where you where you print out your your name to the screen. Get that to work as soon as possible, um, and reach out and ask if you are having any problems with running. Visual Studio, or again, if you're on another platform, I can help you. By the way, for a Mac, you would use Xcode. For Linux, there's a variety of tools, um, and you can contact me for that. Grading policy. Um, the labs, we have 11 labs. They're only worth a grand total of 10%. I grade them lightly. I want to see that you're doing them. Do them yourself. Take the time to actually work through them. They're practice. I'm looking to see whether you've put the effort into them throughout the semester. They're, each lab is worth less than 1% of your grade. Do them all. Don't go crazy about if you know you, you, you get stuck on one and you didn't get it completed. It's not going to damage your grade tremendously. But turn it in. Make sure that you're putting some consistent effort on those labs. Homework grades are a little bit more important. So those homeworks due at the end of the week. Um, there's three of them, and the, grant, the, the all of them wrap up to 20% of your grade. Obviously, the midterm and the final are worth much more. You're going to be doing code within a three-hour period for the midterm and the final. The only way you're going to be successful doing that is if you've put in consistent time and effort into the labs and the homework. If you can't do the labs on your own in about an hour or two, if you can't do the homework assignments on your own in a few hours, you know, five, six hours at most, you won't be able to do the problems on the midterm or the final. All right. Conversely, if you are doing a good job on labs and homework and you're finding that you can work through them and solve those problems by yourself without looking at solutions, you're going to do real well on the midterm and the final. They are exactly like labs and homeworks. Um, individual exams and assignments are not curved, so you're going to see your raw percentage posted to Moodle after the exam. Um, final letter grade assignments do, do get a curve. Um, and so 
if I go over to the syllabus, at the end I kind of outline where your letter grades would fall. So if if you calculate your your complete average and you end up, let's say, with a uh, an 82, uh, that's good for a B minus at worst. All right. Um, if you get an 82 um, and the rest of the class has done sort of relatively poorly to the 82, um, that B minus might actually turn up to be a B or a B plus. I never curve down, um, but I only apply that curve at the end of the semester when all the grades are done. Then I start to adjust things. Um, and again, if, if depending on depending on the course, sometimes there's no curve, sometimes there is a curve, um, but it will never hurt. So you know that if you get an 82, you're guaranteed at least a B minus. Um, communication I mentioned in the beginning. Um, please check your email often. Um, if you have an issue, email me right away. Um, if we need to meet, we can. Um, usually in the winter session, I'm not on campus all that much. Um, certainly don't stop by unannounced because it's a good chance I'm not on campus. Um, but I will be available. Um, so email me. We can set up a video conference. Um, and if it's convenient um, for both of us, maybe we will be on campus and meet. Um, but just don't don't hesitate to let me know when you need help. Um, don't wait until the third week. Don't wait until after the midterm to ask for help. It's going to be too late. Um, I don't mean that to discourage anybody, but um, Computer Science 1, um, especially if you don't have a lot of programming experience, it's a challenging course even in the normal 13-week semester. Um, this is a three-week semester, and it's the same material. Um, so you do need to be prepared to work hard, and you need to be ready to ask for help when that, when that happens. Um, so I, I hope you enjoy the course. I, I wish you the best of luck. Um, I look forward to hearing from all of you. Um, please get started on the, the, the rest of the modules as soon as you can. You don't even need to wait to the beginning of the semester. If you're viewing this ahead of time, you can get started. Um, so um, if you're, you're still in finals, good luck on your finals to the fall semester. And I'll talk to you soon.